Is it a sign of the Conservative Party's moral decay that some of your colleagues were more interested in stuffing their own pockets by gambling on the date of the election than uh, on helping hard-pressed families hit by the cost of living? Well, yes, Trevor, it doesn't surprise me. Tories uh, caring more about their bank balance than the average citizen of our great uh, country, the United Kingdom. It doesn't really surprise me. Does it surprise you? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Press subscribe while you're there. Today we're going to talk about more Tory turmoil, more Tory chaos. Yes, can it get any worse? Of course, with the Conservatives, anything could get worse because we've had the gambling uh, stuff about uh, people close to Rishi Sunak uh, gambling on the date of the election. Well, according to uh, Sky News, they say that many more people, many, many more people than the ones that have been identified are being investigated by the gambling regulator uh, in relation to bets on the date of the general election. And um, the watchdog, which is the Gambling Commission, which we're going to hear a lot about in a second with James Cleverly, the Home Secretary, they've widened uh, their inquiries, they're going to investigate many more people, uh, and they're pretty much going to investigate any bets more than £20 on the date of the election uh, when Rishi Sunak uh, announced it. Let's hear what James Cleverly has to say. Well, I'm not in any way going to defend people that uh, uh, placed bets on that. Uh, it, there is an investigation um, by the Gambling Commission, and uh, we have been, you know, told very, very clearly that we are not to discuss the investigations. But the broad point is well, that what you do know is that it's not just one or two people. But as I say, look, it, the, 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 this is this is pretty thoroughgoing. There's a lot of them. Uh, so first of all, James Cleverly is going to hide behind the Gambling Commission. Ah, it's the Gambling Commission. They're going to investigate it. I don't need to say anything. I can't say anything to you. Uh, that's the Tory line at the moment. And yes, <laughs> there are many more people behind this. The circle around Rishi Sunak, I mean, obviously we don't know for sure. And at the moment, these are just allegations that need to be investigated. But they're all just caring about money. As soon as they knew the date, uh, they knew it would be a surprise, so they knew that the odds of an election being called were very, very high, I guess. So uh, the odds would have been on an autumn election, like many people were saying. So there was an ability to make a lot of money here. Uh, as far as one can make that's it. Not there are, no, that's there are not my understanding. a bunch of no, investigations. That's not my understanding. My understanding is that um, it is a small number of individuals. Well, um, a and... small number of very highly placed individuals... But as I say, look, I'm not, I'm, not, party. Look, I'm not defending. I'm not defending the actions. It's, it, it is inappropriate, but the Gambling Commission has got a role to play. It is playing that role. It, you know, we, are, uh, we have been told that we should not discuss the details of this investigation, and so I'm going to abide by the instructions of the Gambling Commission. Notice, by the way, on Sky News, <laughs> rolling across the bottom of uh, breaking news about the Miranda policy crap. <laughs> we'll come to that in a minute. But uh, yes, James Cleverly not really saying too much. He can't defend those people, obviously, um, but he can't really say anything or he doesn't really want to say anything. But to be honest with you, what we should be questioning is we should be questioning the leadership here of Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak, obviously, we know he's pretty bad at politics, but we also have learned that he's pretty bad at leadership too. OK, you're, you're confident, by the way, that none of your colleagues was involved in any of this? Your cabinet colleagues? Well, as I say, I've, I've got no reason to believe any of them were at all. Um, the, okay. uh, as I say, the, the, the Gambling Commission has made it very, very clear we are not meant to discuss this, okay. and so I'm going to abide by I, that. I'll tell you why, what, what's really puzzling here. Um, OK, the Cam Gambling Commission can what, do what it wants to do, but the Prime Minister claimed to be furious. But he says it's all got to go through this process. Why doesn't he, like any other employee might do in this situation, call in the alleged offenders, ask them, did you place a bet or did you not place a bet? The answer is binary. It's either yes or no. And if the answer is yes, sack them. And Trevor is right here. In any other organisation, in any other kind of job, if this kind of thing happened and they did something wrong, the boss, the manager, supervisor, call them into the office and say, did you do that? Yes or no? Binary choice. If they say yes, then they just say, you're fired, you're sacked. I mean, why doesn't Rishi Sunak say that? And the reason is, is because uh, obviously uh, some of them are uh, candidates in the upcoming election. 
Why doesn't he disown them or why doesn't he get rid of them? I don't know. But this is something that we have to question. Obviously, uh, the Gambling Commission will do their investigation and that's what they say they're going to hide behind or what they're going to follow. But still, Rishi Sunak could come out and fire these people very easily. Why doesn't he do it? Because that's the Gambling Commission's no, role and no, responsibility. No, he's the Prime and Minister. These people work for him. He can do whatever he wants. He can just say, if it were you, he'd say, James, tell me the truth. Did you or did you not? Well, and you, being an honest man, would say yes or no. Well, in the... In the... Because Rishi Sunak is a weak man, a weak Prime Minister... And on July the 4th, we get to change that. So don't forget to make that change because otherwise you'll have this little weak boy in charge of our country after July 4th. Uh, I mean, the example of uh, Craig, uh, Craig Williams, Craig has said what he did and has put himself into the, uh, into the hands of the investigators at the Gambling Commission. So... Um, I don't know what other conversations have had uh, have been had. As I say, I don't necessarily know the, um, the the process in detail. But the Gambling Commission is the appropriate body for this. Okay. They have said they're investigating, and they've also said that it's inappropriate for us to comment on what is this, a live. This is so weird. The man is the Prime Minister. He doesn't get told what to do by the Gambling Commission. No, we all no no. Actually, Trevor, that's completely the opposite. The whole point of our system is that, that as yeah, politicians... No, no, not. There's no, there's no, no one puts themselves uh, above... Um, look, no one puts no. themselves above the law. No one puts themselves above the, the, the appropriate authority no. to investigate this. And, and the Gambling Commission is the appropriate authority. Uh, they are the, the, conducting an investigation and we are abiding the, by this the instructions. This is not the law. So the Prime Minister could sack them if he wanted to but he can't because of some reason. And again, some of these people, especially Craig Williams, who they mentioned, is the candidate for uh, a seat, a constituency in Scotland in uh, the general election. So that's a problematic point. He was also Mr Sunak's private uh, parliamentary secretary as well. So he's very close to the prime minister. Maybe they have a close relationship, I don't know. But uh, he could just simply get rid of him, but he can't. Another person they can't seem to get rid of is Nigel Farage. And obviously Nigel Farage is like a big shadow <laughs> or a big person standing over the Conservative Party currently. Could he join the Tory party in the future? Nigel Farage, uh, does he have, do you think, a part to play in the future of the Conservative Party? Well, I've said this before. Um... He has said over and over again his motivation is uh, complete toxicity towards the Conservative Party. And I cannot As see... As it currently is. Well, I can't... No, I cannot see... He hasn't said he can... would never rejoin the Conservative Party. He hates the Conservative Party as it currently is. So my point is, in the well, future, can well, you see Nigel Farage? Sh the, well, the short answer is no, I can't. Okay. Now, unless if he goes on a if, if he goes on a, a, a if he goes on a political journey, well, that's up to him. But as it stands at the moment, um, we 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 uh, we are seeing things that are being said by members of the Reform Party at every level, which I think are completely against the principles and philosophy. Uh, one of my one of the most one of my proudest functions in government is our support for Ukraine and its self-defence against Russia's brutality. I'm very proud of the role that we played in the Second World War, defending um, yeah. freedom and democracy. And, and when we see comments coming out of that party, which are, um, which are uh, uh, kind of echoing, echoing oh. Putin's lines, uh, saying that... That, that, that Churchill should have appeased Hitler. I cannot, I cannot envisage how uh, attitudes like that have any home in the Conservative Party you're, now or in the future. You're, you're, you're... James Cleverly there, obviously referring to Nigel Farage's comments on BBC Panorama's interview show with Nick Robinson the other day, where he said that uh, the West gave Russia a pretext to invade Ukraine. Obviously, uh, he is parroting Putin. Also, we've heard that a number of their candidates have said some questionable things, including one of them who has said that we should have appeased uh, Hitler and that Winston Churchill was abysmal.
Yeah, you haven't got any flights off, by the way, have you? So... Yes, we have, actually. Oh, really? Yes, we have. Aha, uh -huh, that caught you out, isn't it? it and here they're talking about flights to Rwanda because flights to Rwanda, he said, have taken off. But actually, in fact, the people who were on those flights were volunteers who were given £3,000 each to go. So actually, people who are uh, scheduled to uh, go to Rwanda on the Rwanda scheme hasn't actually uh, happened yet. However, they will use this example as a way to say, yes, ah, we've got flights to Rwanda. But of course, like I said, these were voluntary people. These people said, yeah, I'm happy to go. Give me three grand. The point is, so so we I, have... I'm, I'm not talking about the people who volunteer to go. So we haven't because, got the no, steam because, because working. The point, because the point being, the point being is that is part of the proof of concept. That is part of the, of the, of the planned approach to demonstrate that the, the, uh, the Randa end of the system is ready that the, uh, the hosting yeah. environment is ready, <laughs> the fact it is a safe country for asylum seekers, which we already knew because, okay. of course, the United right. Nations uses Rwanda for asylum processing. And, of course, we had to pass a law through our parliament to say Rwanda was a safe country because before our courts recognised Rwanda as an unsafe country. But we passed a law to say a country is safe when it's not safe according to our own laws. But anyway, there you go. What do you think about the Rwanda scheme? Is it a waste of money? Is it just um, a way to burn money? And what do you think about Nigel Farage's comments? And what do you think about this uh, Tory chaos? More Tory chaos, more Tory turmoil. Are you voting Conservative on July 4th or are you voting for change? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.